me and my boy on Stampede Saturday. I just got back from my cosplay photo shoot out in the desert. Uh, shout out to my sister for waking up at six in the morning <laughs> to take pictures with me before it got too hot. Um, my hair is failing right now. <laughs> so please ignore that. But before I take it all off, I just wanted to show, kind of do like a walkthrough of each piece and how I made them, what I made them out of. And you're welcome to use any of my tips or tricks. I'm not gonna gatekeep. So if anything helps you figure out something for your own costume, feel free to steal it. That being said, I'm not a cosplay expert. I'm sure there are better ways to do like nearly everything that I've done for this cosplay. Okay, top to bottom. The hair is just my natural hair. I just gelled it up and hairsprayed it, shaved it to uh, three eighths on the sides. And I just bleached the top of my hair with no toner so that it stays yellow. My glasses, they're prescription, um, cause I have a really heavy prescription. So I did have to shell out some good money for these, but I wear them all the time, so it was worth it. But I believe that they were the Palo Alto size large from I Buy Direct with an orange lens. For my makeup, I did a basic black and brown like, eyeliner pencil in my eyebrows and then some liquid eyeliner and a little bit of mascara, a little bit of smeared, I think it's a lip liner, but I've used it as for red eyeliner. I use it for blush. So the blush here and the red under my eyes is just that lip liner pencil. I wanted it to look kind of like a sunburn. My contacts are Chromaview contact lenses, uh, single use, and the color is Blue Walker. And it's- Stop staring at me with them big old eyes. A really nice uh, like Baja Blast color. I have like bluish green eyes to begin with, but you can't see them through the glasses. So that's why I wanted to wear contacts. My earring I just bought from a jewelry supply store on Etsy. It's just a gold filled hoop. I did have to take out all my other piercings, which I almost never take out. Even my industrial, like that never leaves my ear. I did leave these in, not because I thought they added to the cosplay, but because I just don't feel comfortable taking out my helix piercings yet. And these are unobtrusive enough that I just left them in. The teeth are actually fake nails. I cut little fangs and then glued them on with denture strips, not denture glue. Big difference. Cause I did my makeup test last week with denture glue and they would not stay. So I was like frantically texting my cousin who's my resource for all things cosplay. And I was like, I can't get these to work. And she said, it's cause you gotta use the strips. They work way better than the glue. And I can't attest, these have been on for about five hours. I've been talking, I can drink water with a straw and they're not going anywhere. I did have two small fangs on the bottom in the pictures, but I took those off because it made talking kind of hard. I didn't want to have a speech impediment when I was making this video. So I took those fangs off, but those stayed on pretty well too. Uh, they were a little bit looser simply because my top jaw was kind of weighing down on them. And I couldn't close my mouth all the way to a resting position when I had them in. So I think if I was gonna take this to a con or something and do it for an entire day, I wouldn't have the bottom teeth in because it's just too much of a hassle. And I feel like you don't really even see my bottom teeth that much anyway. The shirt is just a black turtleneck tank top. I went with a little bit more of a Trimax look with the exposed shoulders to help keep me cool because my coat is wool. And also because this hand is attached to a glove that goes all the way up. And I didn't wanna to have to cut apart one of my good black turtlenecks for this. So I like, I really like the way that it looks with the shoulders out. For the glove, this cuff thing is just a strip of two millimeter foam that was primed and painted. And I put a snap on it so I can take it off and on. I don't need to actually use the snap because I can fit my hand through it, but it covers up this seam that I put in here because I found these gloves at the thrift store and I really liked this leather detailing that they had on them. So even though I had an opera glove that went all the way up, I cut it here and attached this glove to the sleeve of the opera glove. I wasn't sure if I was gonna do the nail polish, but I texted my partner in crime and said, nail polish, yay or nay? And she said, absolutely. So I just used Sally Hansen black Insta-Dry because I can only use Insta-Dry nail polish because my ADHD brain does not like sitting for an hour waiting for paint to dry. The coat is a Kristen Blake merino wool coat that I found for 20 bucks at the thrift store. And I felt a little bad for chopping it up, but also it's like, it was 20 bucks at the thrift store. I 
Didn't really make any modifications to it other than taking off the buttons on one side and cutting this sleeve short to about here. And then I rolled this sleeve up. The patches I got from Kumulate Cosplay on Etsy. So even though these are iron-on patches, I sewed them on in case I wanted to move them or take them off for any reason. This one was a bit more of a challenge because it would not form to the shape of my arm. I sewed it on like two or three times and it would just like flatten out and make the sleeve look really weird. So what I did was I heat shaped a piece of two millimeter foam into a curve, adhered the patch to the foam, and then sewed the patch and the foam as one unit onto the sleeve. And it stayed really well and makes a nice curved shape over my arm. This little piece here is a piece of four millimeter foam that I just bevel cut and spray painted and put the little notches in. It's just attached with a Velcro. Um, so it comes off real easy. With this zipper, I had really, really wanted to install blue lining into this coat, um, but I could not for the life of me figure out how to do it. And I had this other jacket that I was trying to modify to fit into this coat, but they weren't exactly the same and I couldn't get things to line up. So I ended up just ripping out the zipper and then sewing it in so that I had a zipper and a little bit of blue. I have to sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. The problem with this zipper though, is that it doesn't go all the way down to the bottom of the coat, but I think it goes down far enough that it's fine. So, and it's a functional zipper, so I can zip it up if I need to. And I'm also really glad that I didn't install the full lining actually, because I feel like the shade of blue is like slightly off from my arm and it would have clashed too much and it wouldn't have looked good. I also cut and sewed some boning channels in here to kind of stiffen up the collar on this because otherwise it would just flop back. You can see the, the boning is sticking out right here. I put a couple zip ties in as boning. They go down to about here. Okay, my pants, they're just plain cotton joggers that I got like a year or two ago from the thrift store for like $9. They're elastic at the ankle. I did have to sew Velcro onto them to hold up my holster, which I was bummed about that because I like to wear these pants all the time. But if I want to wear them out somewhere I can just take the velcro off real quick or just wear them with velcro because who cares I just got regular gray socks and then my boots I think I got these for like 30 or 40 bucks from Walmart they're platform so they give me about two extra inches of height which I need it because I'm only five foot six and Vash has got to be at least six foot I added this heel part and this toe part these are just two millimeter foam with um, brads and rivets applied to them. They're not actually riveted into the shoe. That's purely for decoration. And then there's also this little bit down here that I added. And then because I had a bunch of extra rivets, I put these little hearts into the back because I thought it would be really cute. The holster I made from a leather tote that I just found at the thrift store. This was like the strap that was on it and I turned it into a strap for my leg. This I cut and hot glued together to fit the exact size of my gun. It is not cute if you look at the seams, they're like really messy and hot glued, but um, it held up while I was like climbing rocks and stuff today. So we stay winning. Okay, for the revolver, I don't have any crop, crop crafting, prop crafting experience, aside from the various prosthetic hands that I've made. So I had no idea where to start with this, but I just used I Would Cosplay's revolver kit and assembled it just like he instructed. The revolver build was pretty straightforward. It was a lot of gluing and waiting for the glue to dry and then stacking and then gluing again. But the kit and the instruction video were really simple to follow. Probably the hardest part was when I had to freehand some bevel cuts. I suppose I could have done the build without the bevel cuts and it would have looked okay, but I really wanted it to look as accurate as possible. So I just went for it. After making a couple practice cuts in scrap material and making sure that I changed out my blades for every cut, it was really stressful, but I came out with some pretty good 45 degree cuts and even on the spots where they didn't look very good it wasn't anything that a little bit of sanding with a rotary tool and some fine grit sandpaper and the paint job couldn't fix. Contact cement is my new best friend. I had never used it before this build. It goes on like a thick paint and then it takes about 20 minutes to dry 
Well, it was only 10 minutes for me because it was almost 100 degrees outside when I was building this thing. But you have to wait for it to completely dry before you glue the things together. So it's just a lot of waiting for glue to dry. I took a piano break while I was waiting for these pieces to dry. But once they're glued, that seam is not going anywhere. When I was testing the adhesive, I glued a couple pieces of foam together and then tried to rip them apart. And it was the foam itself that ripped, not the seam where the contact cement was. And then I hit it with a coat of primer and a little bit of black spray paint and then a silver dry brush. I feel like you can see the detail better when I don't have the ring light on. A silver dry brush just to bring out all the highlights and stuff. Now, Lawrence Iwood's design should have a rotating barrel. However, I'm a doofus and messed up on mine, so it doesn't actually rotate. Although I do believe this is to scale. This does look like uh, it would fit actual 22 cartridges. Although I'm not about to test that out. But even though I messed up the revolving barrel, I did okay on the hinge part. Lawrence suggested using a magnet and I tried that, but it just wasn't strong enough because this is a brick and it's very heavy. So I actually used some Velcro. I attached some Velcro right here and then right here and it actually works pretty good. So finally for the arm, it's actually in several different pieces. So there's this upper part here. These slits, um, you can actually put little glow sticks into. So this does glow. It's just too light in my room for you to see. So for the arm, I based it off of Lawrence Iwood's pattern, but I modified it enough that if you were to make his arm exactly as the instructions say, uh, it would not look like mine. So I'll tell you what I changed. Everything here is uh, four millimeter, except for this, which I believe is eight millimeter foam. And then everything on the hand is two millimeter foam. So I increased the size of this piece. On his pattern, it was smaller. I added this piece um, because he didn't have a separate piece for this. These two are pretty much exactly the same as the pattern. This piece, which should go in right here, I completely manufactured on my own. This was, this was my own piece here. The elbow, and then the like radius and ulna pieces were based off of Lawrence's design, but modified to fit my arm specifically. This, um, I don't remember if this piece was in his design or not. I genuinely don't remember. It's just a long strip of four millimeter. The wrist piece was my own. The knuckle caps and the tendons were Lawrence's. These like underneath layers are mine. The middle digits are Lawrence's design. The fingertips are my own design. And I actually added some fingernails to this from that same pack of fingernails that I got my teeth out of because I wanted to have like a very organic looking fingertip. This is the design that I ended up going with for the fingertip. So it wraps around so that it's a rounded finger and it's not too blocky. And the seam is on the underside, so it looks really good on the top. Because I wanted the hand to look very elegant and organic, and I knew that the layer of glove and foam around that was going to really bulk up my fingers, I created the illusion of having longer, skinnier fingers by placing the fingertips not directly on the tip of my finger, but maybe quarter to half an inch past my fingertip, so that it makes the finger look longer. It kind of negates the bulk of the finger. Lawrence's arm video actually uses duct tape instead of a glove, but I went with a glove because that's my tried and true method of prosthetic cosplay arm assemblage. Although the problem with that is that I always use hot glue to adhere the foam to the glove, but there's no way to properly do that unless your hand is inside the glove. And so I have suffered many, many burns on my hands because <laughs> It's the only way that I can figure out how to do it. The process for the arm was pretty similar to the process for the revolver, except instead of stacking layers upon layers of foam, I just had to constantly check that each piece that I was gluing together was going to fit me and work the way that I had planned. Because even though I made a mock-up out of paper, that paper 
does not account for the thickness of the foam. Even if it is just two millimeter foam, which is the thinnest that I was working with, that's a whole lot thicker than paper. So I did have to make adjustments on the fly and cut each piece a little bit bigger than I thought it needed to be to account for the extra volume of the foam. I didn't get any footage of the painting process because I couldn't figure out a way to set up my phone to capture footage where it would not be at risk of getting paint on it. But you all know what spray paint looks like. I used Plasti Dip as a primer and these color shot colors for the main paint layer, and then sealed it all in with a couple layers of clear acrylic. I highly recommend that you use contact cement in any build because hot glue will fail on you like nobody's business. I hot glued these two pieces together and they completely failed and you can see it in some of the pictures. But I, um, I actually crazy glued these on because I did not want to lose my knuckle caps. Um, oh, all the palm pieces were my own design also. So the way that this arm works, everything is glued on to the glove on the hand except for the ring finger. So the ring finger actually just pops off because I needed to have a spot to have leverage to take the glove off. Otherwise I was never gonna be able to get it off my hand. So I have to very gently tug at everything to loosen it. This wrist part is um, Velcroed, so it makes for easier removal. Once all my fingers are loose, the glove should come off pretty easy. There you go. And there's my glove. This piece here, the forearm is, okay, this should be connected. I need to re-glue that. Um, it's not glued to the glove at all, but I did hot glue a hairband right here that helps keep it tight on my wrist. Otherwise it kind of flops around. So that hairband, hairband around my wrist was the only reason that I didn't lose this piece in the desert today. This elbow piece honestly fit me phenomenally. I cannot recommend Lawrence's pattern enough because I was so worried about having to build an elbow, but his elbow piece worked so well for me. Cause I've built two other cosplay prosthetic arms in the past, but they never had to go up to an articulated elbow. And that's the part that I was like most stressed about, but this honestly worked so well. This piece just kind of slides on. It's not secured anywhere. It just rests naturally between this arm shield part and then the forearm. And then this is just held on with some Velcro. And the glow stick channels that I made are actually just paper straws that I cut a slit out of and then covered these ones with duct tape so that they weren't so barber pole ugly. Um, and then the glow sticks just go in like that. So that was it basically. Um, I didn't record a ton of my process partially because it took me so long to put this whole thing together and also because I'm just the forgetter. If you have any questions or want me to go into more detail for any particular piece, just let me know and I'll do my best to answer that. I'll leave links down below to the people that I bought things from. But yeah, this was fun and it was a lot of work and it was definitely a learning curve, but I learned so much and I'm really proud of how this turned out and all the little personalized elements that I added to it and the way that it kind of combines like Trimax and Tri-Stamp designs. I just, I'm, I'm really proud of how it turned out. Thanks for watching. Love and peace.